Hello, and welcome to Lecture 4 of Electric Charges and Forces in Phys 1201. And in the next two lectures, we're going to be looking at electric fields, which probably really deserve about a month of the course, but we're only going to be able to afford to give them a week. Electric fields are an example of a more general idea just called a field. And so the first thing to understand is this idea of what a field is. So here's a hypothetical question. Here's the sun and the earth in a definitely not to scale diagram. And let's suppose that somehow in an, in an experiment that I hope we are never able to carry out, suddenly we make the sun disappear. Poof, it's gone. So the question now is, how long would it take for us on Earth to notice that the sun was gone? And you might be inclined to say, well, I think we would notice right away if the sun disappeared, Jeff. But actually, there's a detail here. Because we are quite a long way away from the sun. And the way we know the sun is there is that there's light arriving at the Earth from the sun. And so at the instant the sun disappeared, there would still be all of this light filling space around the sun streaming outward in all directions. And now what would happen is we've got this hole in the light here where the sun just disappeared and that would grow as the trailing edge of the light moves away from where that light originated. And eventually that would get out to the earth and all of a sudden then we would see the sun disappear. And so the answer is about eight and a half minutes. That's about how long it takes for light to travel this direction. But now I want you to focus on this idea of how when the sun was here, it had filled space all around it with all of this light. So it had in some sense modified space by filling it with light. And what we interact with on the Earth is not the sun directly. It's all this light arriving at us from the sun. We're interacting with the modified space surrounding the sun. And this is an example of a field. So now let's think of something more closely related to what we've been talking about with electric forces. But I want you to keep that image of the light filling all of space around the sun in your mind, because we're going to use the same sort of idea here. So let's think about two charges separated by a distance r. And so we can use Coulomb's law to calculate the force that they exert on each other. Now let's suppose that we wiggle this charge, q1, back and forth. That's going to change the value of r, and so in turn, it's going to change the value of the force. But it doesn't happen immediately. We're not going to think of the charge as interacting directly with the other charge. We're going to think instead of each charge modifying space around it, just like the sun filled space around it with light. These have in some way modified space around them. And so now this influence, the change to do with how this charge moved back and forth has to propagate outward before it has any effect on the other charge. This modified space, which is the real agent of the force on charge Q2, is what we call the electric field. I just want to make clear that we're not actually going to worry about how the influence of one motion of a charge is delayed on other charges. But we are going to use this idea of how all of space around a charge is filled with this thing we call the field. And that it's this field which is what actually exerts the electrical forces. This brings us to the definition of the electric field. Let's just think about some big region of space, empty space. There's nothing at all here. And in the middle of it, there's some point A. And we're interested in the point A. 
we want to know how charges behave there. Now there are no charges there, but we want to know how charges will behave as they move through the point A. And so, to find out, we bring in a probe charge. Now, we're not interested in this charge. We're using it to measure the properties of point A. And to keep things simple, let's say that this is a positive probe charge. And what we find when we put it at point A is that there's a force on it, an electrical force, like that. You might ask, what's causing this force? Well, of course, there are several possibilities. It's a positive probe charge, so that electric force could be caused by a bunch of positive charges over here. Or they could be caused by a bunch of negative charges over here. Or perhaps a combination of both. The point is, we don't know. Or perhaps we do know about the arrangement of charges, but it's so complicated we actually don't want to have to worry about it. So instead, we define this thing that we call the electric field. And this is now a property of the point A. So we say that the electric field at point A is the measured electrical force on our probe charge divided by the amount of charge on the probe charge. And what this now allows us to do is say that attached to the point A, or associated with it, is this field vector E, which is a property of the point A. It doesn't in any way depend on the probe charge. It's a property of the point in space. Let's check that you've understood the basic definition of the electric field. So suppose we have some negatively charged ball. Call it Q. It's right here. And near to it, there's some location that we've labeled P. And this charge here is the only charge in the whole region. There are no other charges nearby. So which way does the electric field point at P? 